the reason I wanted to make this video is because some of you are asking questions about uh, why we're changing the boxes or, or the, the reason for the new design of the boxes. Um, just to give you a couple of examples, when we uh, decided to change the boxes, our old boxes were based primarily off of uh, you know things that we had seen as far as traditional training goes. Um, the first and probably most important thing was the target chamber where we actually had the substances inside the wooden compartment down at the bottom of the box. And what happened was is every time we put the substance in the bottom part of the box, we were uh, pretty much strapped to using this box for that particular substance every time. That was pretty much our Achilles heel. In addition to that, when we put the substance into the box, it would soak into the wood and that caused us to have to leave this as the marijuana box. So we did away with the substance container. As you can tell, it's, it's not present here. And we went with a pod and something that is PVC, something where we can protect the substance away from the wood. We can protect the substance from getting doggy odor all over the substance itself. And, uh, and it's worked out very, very well. As opposed to going back and trying to get uh, somebody to actually mold us a piece right now, which is pretty expensive, we're using um, uh, items that we can gather from uh, Home Depot and uh, some of the other fixtures that are already in existence um, uh, for plumbing type work. And um, that is one of the primary differences. In addition to that, we can take that pod off and actually move it around and leave that box designated for that. We will mark each one of the substance boxes with a piece of red tape on the top here red tape on the top here, red tape here. Each one of those is a substance box. We will protect the integrity of the pod as much as we can by cleaning it off with just water, hot water, preferably a power washer or something of that nature. What we don't want to do is use soap and water and put it into a dishwasher with soap because all of that holds odor and we don't want to isolate the soap odor um, along with the substance odor for obvious reasons. So those are cleaned utilizing our hands in hot water, a power wash if we can, and then they're put outside to, um, uh, to let the sun get to them. When we get ready to utilize them again, we'll bring the pot in, we'll put it in one of the boxes, but the other boxes that do not have the pot in them anymore, the doggy odor from the dog scratching on the box or getting up inside the box is left on the other substance boxes that don't have a pot in them. So what we're trying to do is neutralize as much as we can the doggy odor and only have one pod in one substance box that has the substance in it. So that's the primary reason for that. Another Achilles heel that we had was the three inch pipe on the top that we used to deliver the reward object through. If you notice here at the top, it has a tendency to cut into that pipe and when that cuts into that pipe, it, it causes jagged edges. And sometimes when we want to release the ball and get it there at the proper amount of time, which we know timing is everything, the, the gouges will actually catch on to the rope and, and your timing is messed up and you only have one chance to do that right. You'll notice in these new boxes, the four inch pipe instead of the three inch pipe is countersunk into the wood Therefore, the, the only contact made by the string is here at the, um, on the wood itself, and it does not cut and burn like the PVC does. So I'm sure I'll be showing some illustrations of, of how that is countersunk. In addition to that, with the 4-inch pipe instead of the 3-inch pipe, I can reach all the way down there if I have to and reinforce the dog, or I can get a bigger reward object like a Kong or a a tile or something of that nature down in there and it delivers very very quickly and then I can create the game right at the source which we're we're fond of doing. I can also take and manipulate these pods to uh, coincide with some of the things we want to do when we're setting a final response and the dog is is learning what the final response is and we want him to settle right there at the box. Um, uh, all of this is important to us and, and stuff that, that that we want to uh, to take care of. 
in addition to that, you'll notice the ring on the top. Used to when we would when we would isolate the dog and put him in the correct position or manipulate his environment, we would stretch the leash across the uh, the pipe here. But as you notice, we don't have anything protruding up. So that's the reason for these eye bolts. We will actually, if the dog is actually here, we'll put the leash around this particular eye bolt and that gives us the same uh, effect as the pipes here did. You'll notice too that on the top of it, we have what I refer to as a wand hole because Juan came up with this idea and constantly we were trying to move these notches around by grabbing the top of the pipe or we'd have to reach across and grab it here. But with the wand hole, we can reach right in there, grab the box, and we have it pretty much squared away and can put it wherever we want to. You'll notice the PVC pipe that is here at the top. We originally had put those at the bottom. Our idea was that when the dog got up on him with his feet, he would just slide off or it would keep the feet out of the inside of it. And best laid plans go to rest, and that one certainly did, but we did actually move the pipe or the... Um, a PVC pipe up here to the top and this protects the dog from, from actually getting his nose up against the wood and, and scraping his nose which as you well know that means we have to put him up for 10-12 days until that heals and then put him back in there so this does a really good job of protecting the dog from being uh, able to you know, hit his head up on the top um, uh, so we decided to leave that pipe into the design of the boxes you'll notice too that the boxes are much more narrow than what the old boxes were. Plus, we've increased the depth by moving the front of them out a little bit. And we found that when the dog is actually interacting with the reward object and getting a fight, that the dog has a much more difficult time of utilizing his eyes to figure out what's going on because of the depth of the box. Uh, he also has a harder time seeing what's going on behind the rack than he did with with these. It's only a couple of inches, but it makes a, a huge difference as far as the angle and what the dog can see and what we can see. We also know that on these larger, um, um, with the, th the, the deeper box along with the four inch pipe, we can actually look down the pipe and see what's going on, reinforce the dog and see everything we need to see just from looking down the pipe, which was much more difficult with the three inch pipe. The reason we discontinued the installation of the plexiglass is that we realized over the last several years that using the old boxes, we seldom ever opened those boxes, um, rec recognizing that the need for that plexiglass really wasn't necessary. All it was really necessary for is in the traditional methods of training, they would use that in order to put the ball or the reward object behind the glass to enhance the dog scratching on a, a substrate in order to to become reinforced. We've realized, kind of like we have with the passive alert on the sit, that the more the dog does a behavior like that, whether it's the obsessive scratching or the sitting and not doing anything, that uh, the longer we did it, the more the dog became aware of it and would choose to do that behavior as opposed to being at the source. So everything we do now as far as a final response, whether it's the passive or the active, has to do with the dog being able to get to the source or working to get to the source. And the only time that they're ever paid and rewarded is, it, is when they get to the source itself. So there you have it. That's the reason we made the changes. It's working out very, very well. I would challenge anybody to, who has used the old boxes to use these for a short period of time and see if, they, see if you're uh, interested in going back to the old boxes after that. They are much easier to use. I think it really enhances the training protocol that we utilize and uh, the old boxes, we still have some of those left that we'll be selling out of, and once we sell out of them, we will no longer be using and selling the, the old style boxes. It'll just be the new boxes with the pods. Um, if I can help you answer any questions, don't hesitate to call me, and thanks for all of your support.